In this repair video, I do my best Brian May impression. I look at a very complicated drawing and I fiddle with a tube. I have this Hughes and Kettner guitar amplifier, which sounds fine on the clean channel, but as soon as we switch to the overdrive channel, it stays silent. When I turn the clean channel to its max, we have some distortion, but then it doesn't sound like a tube amplifier. So it basically turned into an amplifier for jazz guitar, which I am unable to play because I don't read sheet music. So let's fix it. First, let's remove these four screws on top. Now getting into the amplifier was a bit of a challenge, but I finally figured out that by removing the front and desoldering the speaker, we are able to access the screws holding in the amplifier. I always make a little sketch of everything I take apart, to which I can stick everything I remove and number the parts sequentially, which makes putting stuff back together a lot easier. There are two tulip connectors from the amp to the reverb unit in the bottom of the casing, which we will leave in, because it is stapled to the bottom of the cabinet and it will be a pain putting it back neatly if we remove it. After removing the amplifier, we can check the capacitors, which are often the reason why electronics stop working. But first, let's see if we need to drain some of those to prevent any electric shocks. These two 450 volts capacitors turn out to have a decent bit of charge left in them, which they shouldn't have because they should discharge when the amp is turned off, so the path to their bleed resistors could be interrupted somewhere. Let's measure the capacitors. All the capacitors measure close to the values written on them, so that is probably not it. Let's remove the tube. Now I have never measured one of these beautiful tubes before, but what I gather from the documentation, there are only three pins that should be connected. The two heater pins and the heater tap pin. They turn out to be connected to each other and no other shorts are found on the tube. I did notice while rubbing my probes on the pins that they are quite rough, which is probably corrosion. So let's clean the pins with some sandpaper and a bit of WD-40. Working. 
And after putting back the tube and connecting the speaker, we have distortion again. That was a bit of a surprise. I was able to find a schematic online, see the link below if you want to have that, but fortunately we don't have to decipher that for now. Now let's put everything back together. and reconnect the reverb unit. The speaker wires were soldered to the speaker, which is inconvenient if you want to take the amp apart again in the future. So I'll attach some connectors which will clip onto the speakers nicely and are easy to remove without soldering. Because the holes for the screws are difficult to see from the front, I stuck in some cocktail sticks from the back so it was easier to replace the screws. The hardest part of this repair was figuring out how to get the amplifier out, so I may have saved you some time repairing your own amp, which is why I love this repair video so much. If your amplifier has the same problem, see if cleaning the pins of the tube solves it. Thank you very much for watching this video, please like and subscribe and I hope you will join me in the next repair video. Bye then!